How's it going guys, guys, and newbie pals? I'm Alice from Wonder Ad, your favorite cute trans girl, and in today's video, we're gonna be preparing you to undergo bottom surgery. Now this is a very difficult thing to go through. Even though I had my mum with me for emotional support, I still struggled. So what I've done is I've compiled a list of tips and tricks and things that you should keep in mind in order to help you get through this. These are just things that I've learned throughout my experience getting bottom surgery. If you would like to get more context on that, you can watch this video here, which I put out the other week, in which I go in detail on my experience. Thank you to everyone that watched that video. It's done really well, and I've got so much positivity in the comments. Before we start, if you could do me a favor and like and share this video with anyone that you know who is thinking of or planning to get bottom surgery, and maybe we together can help them be more prepared. So now, what do you need to know to be most prepared for this surgery? Here are my tips. Sort out your money situation and try to pay well in advance via bank transfer or however your insurance wants to manage things if you are able to get it through insurance. You wanna get that sorted as early as possible. You don't want this to be any kind of complication. Make it easy for yourself. Get psychologist sign off and be prepared to pay for it. Take care of yourself leading up to surgery. It will help you a lot not just with recovery, but even with just being admitted to hospital. Learn some breathing exercises to lower your blood pressure when you're nervous. Eat healthier food for the month prior to surgery. Don't smoke, don't drink. Follow whatever guidelines your doctor has given you. If you feel an itch in your private parts or you think you're feeling sick, do not waste time. Go get it checked out, get it fixed. You do not want to end up dealing with an STI while you're recovering and you also don't want to be coughing from the flu while you're recovering. These things are important. Make sure you see before and after photos from your surgeon for your peace of mind and also, perhaps more importantly, a thing you haven't thought about, so that you know what you're supposed to look like when you're healing. If you don't know what you're supposed to look like, you don't know if everything's good or if everything's bad. Some surgeons do things differently from others, so your healing process might look different from mine. This is extremely important. Make sure you see before and after photos. Try to talk to some past patients of your surgeon, if you can find them. See what they think. Did they like the surgeon? Did their surgery go well? Shop around for surgeons if you can. Explore several possibilities. Figure out who suits you, where, and at what price. And now, a major thing, and I'm gonna class this as super important, a major thing that you should absolutely be prepared for. After learning that I would need a revision surgery, I did a little bit of research. It is extremely common to require a revision surgery, okay? I think this is just a really important thing that you guys should know. It's something I didn't know, and if I had been prepared for that eventuality, it wouldn't have hit me quite as hard. Speaking of mental health, take care of it. Okay? A range of things. Bring things that will comfort you. Stuffed animals you can cuddle, a support person that will hold your hand. Do whatever you can to make sure that your life isn't going to get thrown upside down while you feel like you're dying in the recovery room. Three days after my surgery, at the worst possible time, one of my YouTube videos got a guideline strike and my entire channel was in debt jeopardy. It was a DMs video and knowing that I have 10 others just like it, I was terrified that the channel I had worked so hard for was gonna get taken down. Try and avoid putting yourself in situations where that kind of thing could happen. I was three days out of surgery and I was not able and not mentally prepared for something like that. I don't think I've ever felt so terrible. Luckily I was able to sort it out with no issues because the guideline strike was a mistake. But it, it, it serves a purpose and it teaches me a valuable lesson. Please do what you can to make sure you don't have anything like that going on. Don't be on the precipice of a breakup with your boy or girlfriend. Break up with them before you go. Whatever, be proactive with your mental health. It's extremely important. Now, in terms of what you should bring, number one, obviously on my list is going to be a support person. Please, 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 if you can, do it. It may be more expensive. You might have to buy more plane tickets. You might have to fork out more for accommodation, but it is worth it. I will never forget what my mother has done for me. I could not have done this on my own and I am so scared for those of you that have to go through the surgery alone. Please find someone if you can. Otherwise, you're just gonna have to be the toughest motherfucker, okay? Next thing you should bring, possibly something you didn't think about, wet wipes slash baby wipes. You're gonna need them, okay? Yes, I know you're not a baby, but about an inch and a half from your asshole, you are going to have an open wound and you do not want fecal matter in there. And learn to wipe front to back as well, by the way. This is just normal girl stuff, but it's, ex it's even more exaggerated and important in this situation. You'll also need to wipe when you pee. Keep that in mind. Keep it dry. Bring pads and period panties. Luckily, my mother saw this coming because I would not have. For your first month, you are going to be leaking like crazy. Blood and yellow liquid. Buy some pads and bring them with you beforehand. You do not want to be dripping all over the place and you don't want to stay in your nice underwear. 
Now, speaking of underwear, swelling is the enemy. I would suggest you invest in a bunch of new underwear specifically for your recovery period, okay? Get good underwear with a 100% cotton gusset. Look that up if you don't know what it means. Get it at least one or two sizes too large as well. You're going to be extremely swollen. Tight underwear is gonna be a no-go for you for probably two months. Speaking of tight clothing and euphoria, you're probably not going to be able to feel much euphoria for a little while. Don't expect to wake up and be like, oh my god, yes, vagina. You're gonna be extremely swollen. You're gonna feel like death and it's gonna be a while before you can look at yourself and enjoy the smoothness. During your recovery, you're going to have a lot of issues. Disregarding pain and discomfort, swelling is the main enemy. And something you don't hear that often online is that the swelling lasts for ages. Seriously, it's gonna take six months for it to go away, sometimes up to a year. On that topic of avoiding swelling, invest in a couple of ice packs, potentially three or four, so that you can swap them out regularly and keep them in your freezer at all times. You get diminishing returns on ice packs after the first month, but for the first month, those ice packs will be a game changer. Instant results. If you go for a walk, you feel super swollen, you come back, you put an ice pack on, and 20 minutes later, you're feeling better. Especially for the first month, try not to be too active. It's good to go for a walk, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. It's probably going to be the most that you can do. And contrary to that, Try not to sit down either. Your hospital should give you a little donut pillow and that'll help you a lot as well. It'll help a lot to get rid of the pressure on your surgery area when you're sitting down, but it only does so much. When you sit down, almost all of your weight is on the pelvis and that will seriously aggravate your swelling. You don't want to be sitting upright more than a couple hours at a time at the start. This can make working difficult. Most surgeons say that you can go back to work after four to six weeks, but in complete honesty, I think that's total bullshit. If you work in an office job where you have to sit down for eight hours, you are not gonna be able to do that. You need to be lying down or standing up. If you can work from home, do that while lying down. Plan to take six to eight weeks off of work. I wasn't able to work eight hour days until two months post-op. I worked my first three weeks back as a mix of work from home and three to four hours a day in the office. Travel, okay. Travel is a bitch, okay? What we just talked about with sitting? Yeah, well, if you went and got surgery anywhere outside of your home country, odds are you're going to have a fairly long flight home. This is a problem. My advice to you, don't skimp on it. Drop an extra $500 and get the fastest flight home you can get. This is a really good piece of advice. The less time sitting down in an airplane seat, the better. Quick layovers, don't fuck around. Trust me, it is worth it. Even with doing that, I actually think I lost about two weeks worth of healing progress just because of the flight home. Being forced to sit on the surgery area for 18 hours of travel was brutal. I was enormously swollen when I got home. Please get the shortest flight home you can manage. Who gives a fuck about the flight there? But the flight home, spend some extra dough on it. And as well, while you're flying, make sure you get up regularly and just walk the length of the plane. Anything you can to get pressure off of that area. If you got surgery in your home country, all I can say is well done. Nice. Entertainment. The length of your hospital stay may well be different to mine, but odds are it'll be boring as hell. Bring a few books or a laptop with a Netflix account with a backlog of interesting shows to watch. Be nice to the nurses. This should probably go without saying. Some nurses are nicer than others, but all of them will treat you better if you're not a complete cunt. Here's another interesting thing. Get comfortable with nudity, okay? A lot of doctors and nurses are going to see you naked. It's just gonna happen. Get used to it. Have no shame. And lastly, if you are someone who procrastinates, um, figure out strategies to combat that because I can tell you firsthand that 100% dilation is gonna be something you're gonna wanna procrastinate and you can't afford to do that. Well, that's all I really have for you at the moment. I'm hoping to share more information with you once I've had my revision surgery. Um, and I'm also going to reserve judgment on getting surgery on Thailand until after I've sorted that out, obviously. I'll say again, this whole ordeal has come at great cost to me. I'm going into debt again to get myself shipshape. If you'd like to help me get through this and bring you more information, or if maybe you just want to help me make better and more videos, my Buy Me A Coffee link is in the description, and Super Chats and memberships are now enabled on my channel. Even if you're just thankful for this video or this video helped you, I really appreciate it.